The specialty of plastic and reconstructive surgery includes wound care. And as a specialty, we have been frustrated uh, over the course of time with our inability to have wounds heal appropriately. Uh, I've been practicing for 22 years and uh, have, uh, over the course of my career, uh, found a new modality uh, for the successful healing of wounds, and that would be with maggot therapy. Um, I'm here to state initially that not all wounds heal, but if we can be, make them more manageable and provide our patients with a better quality of life, uh, we have achieved a significant goal. In my opinion, there are four requirements for a wound to heal. The first is control of infection. We usually achieve this in a hospital setting with the use of the infectious disease consultation, ordering the appropriate antibiotic therapy for these particular wounds. The second is to provide adequate circulation, that is, oxygen carrying capacity to the particular area in question, and this is done by providing adequate blood flow and or topical therapeutics to cause vasodilatation. The third and one of the most important is debridement of the necrotic contaminated material from the wounds. And this is where we use maggot debridement therapy uh, on an ongoing basis. The fourth criteria for the healing of wounds and especially important is the compliance of the patient. As we have dealt with in the past, most of our wound care patients are somewhat non-compliant, uh, be they diabetic or chronic wound carriers. Uh, therefore, um, getting the compliance of the patient is extremely important and sitting down and discussing all the ramifications of the procedures and uh, therapies uh, is extremely important in the beginning of the uh, initiation of the treatment. Wounds come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, they are traumatic, they are chronic, they are vascular, they are diabetic. Uh, we see a host of wounds associated with medical problems. Um, some of these uh, include collagen vascular diseases such as scleroderma and systemic lupus. We also see patients who are chronic rheumatoids and who have used steroids over a prolonged period of time, thus rendering the dermis unable to heal itself. We also see a number of um, bacterial contaminated wounds such as methicillin resistant Staph aureus and vancomycin resistant Staph aureus. Um, and these particular wounds are extremely recalcitrant to treatment. I first heard of maggot therapy uh, many years ago uh, from my dad uh, who was a paramedic in the uh, World War II. He would explain how uh, soldiers, after being wounded, would lay in the fields for three and four days, and they would be recovered and brought back to the field hospitals covered with maggots. It got to the point where uh, the field surgeon would say to, to them to leave the maggots alone, because the maggots would eventually debride and cleanse the wound. This would also free up the field surgeon to provide care to other patients while the maggots were doing the debridement. As a surgical resident, we treated patients with chronic wounds. Uh, we saw a number of uh, patients uh, having an inner city residency who were homeless, who were destitute, and who would sleep in dumpsters and in back alleys. These patients would arrive in our clinics covered with maggots, and it would amaze us how the nature of the wound had not taken their life seeing a wound that had now become clean from the maggot therapy. I first began maggot therapy in my practice approximately 10 years ago. And I had been extremely frustrated with all the problems associated with it, keeping the maggots contained, keeping them on the wound, the quantity of maggots which had to be used. And over the course of time, we have developed a protocol uh, whereby we have advanced maggot debridement therapy to the present day. We work as a team at our institution, and the team approach is extremely important in the utilization of maggot therapy. This provides us with a continued observance of the wound by one member of the team or another, 
each observing the wound on a daily or every other day basis so that we have an idea of where the wound is headed and can ward off any problems ahead of time. The majority of the patients are elderly. They are compromised, either by pulmonary, cardiac, or renal problems. So consequently, uh, we are not subjecting these patients to extensive amounts of surgery on a daily basis to debride a wound, but we are utilizing a modality which can provide the patient with a method of cleaning the wound up appropriately without any post-surgical pain. Surgical and enzymatic debridements are also used. However, as you may well know, enzymes will d destroy good tissue as well as necrotic tissue. We have utilized maggot therapy in an effort to salvage as much tissue as possible. And the maggot therapy has allowed us the opportunity to have extremely large recalcitrant wounds heal appropriately. The maggots will consume only the necrotic tissue. They usually stop eating and digesting when they reach vascularized tissue. Consequently, we can salvage as much of the normal tissue as possible to provide for the reconstruction at a later date. The maggot debridement therapy also eliminates the post-surgical discomfort. And over the course of my career, I have used maggot therapy on every type of wound imaginable. Wounds from pressure sores, from vascular ulcers, from infections, traumatic wounds, as well as surgically created wounds.